Hi, and in this video I'm going to do a 5 stud conversion on a Corrado and set up the wheel bearings correctly because I know there's been a massive debate on going towards Lupo style components which is basically Mark IV set up over the traditional taper roller bearing So the purpose of this video is twofold. One, I'm going to have to go from four stud to five stud, and whether I should keep using the taper roller bearings or do the Lupo style conversion, which a lot of people bang on about as being pretty much a bolt up and fit. This is actually Mark IV, not Lupo. So the difference in the bearing is that's a solid fitted hub and bearing fitted together. That's a roller ball conversion rather than tapered on that section if you've ever messed around with an old vehicle you know people always have issues with them and how many times on the internet have you seen people moaning that they've always got to do the wheel bearings so I'm telling you if you set the wheel bearings up correctly you don't need to go for this fan dangled easy easy to assemble fit in the factory setup where any numpty can just put it on, bolt it up, and then move on to the next car, providing that nuts at the right torque, and all those are bolted on. Nothing to go wrong. Now, a proper taper roller bearing, set up correctly, should last anywhere from 80 to 120,000 miles, which I think is all right. Not unless you've got really big wheels, or your track day in. So I'm going to disregard the Mark IV setup because I know I'm not going to use that. So the only difference between these two discs, this being a five stud later Golf Corrado item and Passat, and this one is the number of holes where it's being drilled. And these are fairly cheap. Now, what you can do is actually transfer your wheel bearings over from here. But a box of wheel bearings was somewhere in the region at £10, so that's not major. The main thing is, is getting them set up properly. So let's see what's in the box. So you've got your castle nut, that seal that goes over the outside, and then a split pin, castle nut, seal goes on the back, and two bearings. Need tool wise, good old hammer. This is what you always like to use. Again, I'm using copper based mostly because I don't want to damage my other tools. So we'll do this outer seal first. Now, sockets I'm using a 30mm socket, and your socket may be slightly different size. The main thing is that's able to go into there and come out again. If you've got that too tight, that's not right but it just needs to be the right side so it goes over that cap. Now it's tapered, it will only go in one way. And the taper always goes on the outside. So I'll put that in, take that out, and just knock it in gently until it changes to all your other tool. Like it. That's almost there. And if you actually look from the other side, you can actually see it's bottomed out and there's little cuts. You can actually chisel out the old bearings and put new bearings in if you weren't replacing the discs. These old discs ask, last for ages. Taper. Pop it in. Try and put it squarely. And on mine, using a 36mm socket, again, check it goes in and comes out. But you don't want it too big, because you don't want to be just catching the edge of there. You don't want to damage the race. So just on the edge. You could do it with chisels and punches. Uh, it's a little bit more fiddly, and you can't get a square.
So, bear in Greece, this one's lithium based EP. Good clean grease. So, again, just get it inside those bearings. Don't worry about putting too much in, any excess actually comes out because there's quite a large amount of area in there. Just, just see it's all in there. You're able to pop that in there and just turn it by hand. And then just run any excess that comes out. Just put it in the middle, that's fine. It needs a fair amount of grease in there. You don't want to fill that area completely. And then just grab a little bit, put it on the inside. Again, replace that seal, the leather side of that one. And then the same with this bearing. same sort of thing let's get that generously packed in full of grease and then we'll pop that into there and that's pretty much it and that's ready to go on the car don't worry about there being too much in there we'll soon sort that out on these if there's a little bit of grooving cut into there or too much out of tolerance sort of marks on there these are still readily available but if you've looked after your wheel bearings that's not going to happen that often sometimes they do catch because they've got to come off squarely so we're going to put those back on so i put the rear spindle back on the abs sensors fitted because i am actually fitting mark 4 esp to this vehicle so if you're interested in that subscribe and i'll give you a rough overview of how I've done it. It's fairly straightforward. Or is it? <laughs> so anyway, let's get this back on. So I've cleaned both sides of the brake disc with brake cleaner anyway, ready for the brakes to go back on. So it simply sits over the top. Once all in together. And there we have it off the car the only two things you need is this little funny washer which has got a groove cut into it which sits only one way on the spindle and the nut everything else is in the kit all the wear and tear items so that sits on there and just put the nut up and there it just sits home nice and square Gone by hand. Now, where people go wrong, you either tighten it up to a particular torque, which isn't right, or they leave it too loose. So, as we go, it spins. There's a little bit of noise there, just the bearings and the grease coming out. So, that helps the bearings settle a little bit as well. So, I'm just going to nip that up and turn it. Again, that's going to push all the grease out and you'll be able to see it coming out and turning there. And how that's self-lubricating itself, it's doing on the other side as well. So, we're going to tighten that up to fairly tight. That helps the bearings settle, but if you've fitted the bearings correctly with the hammer, you've got nowhere to settle to. Now, this is key. Let's get you closer. If we look at that washer, I cannot move that. Let me move some grease out of the way. Any excess grease, just put straight into there because we'll need that greased up. So hopefully you can see the washer there. So that, with a little flat blade screwdriver, can you move it one side to the other? No. So, 
back it off a little bit try again that's got a little bit of movement on it so let's just back it off a little bit more that suddenly went loose there that has got no resistance pushing the washer that is far too loose so again we then turn it up and that putting a little bit of force on it but that again is too loose that would make the outer bearing wear out prematurely because it doesn't sit it square so let's just nip it up a little bit more that's got a lot more resistance on it but it's still doable let's nip it a little bit more that is about right you can move it but it's with force just a little bit more harder you need a little bit more effort for it to go in to shift it okay I'm happy with that bearing like that is going to last a long time unless you put really weird loadings on it to finish it off the castle bearing will only go one way around so it tallies up with the hole that goes through. And that little split pin goes through the middle. Doesn't need a great deal of force to knock it through. This is just sat right. And then just gentle tap down, not very far. And then a split pin's called a split pin because it splits. That's just going to stop it from coming loose. Then get a healthy amount of grease and just pop it in there. And again, just pop that up over the top. The soft side of the mallet. There are special tools. Clean all the excess grease off. And once that grease has actually worked up and spun round, it's going to be a little bit looser. I hope you found that slightly useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, or share it with somebody. This just goes to prove that setting up a wheel bearing correctly is going to last the lifetime of the car. The only thing I'd like to say about the the Mark IV later style setup, there's a slightly less rolling resistance when you spin the wheel. Hardly noticeable once you've got the weight of the tyre and the wheel round and you spin it, but nevertheless, a little bit less resistance on the later style, and that's the only benefit you're going to get. So thanks very much. Ta da!